Hey guys, nice to see you again. Florian Schiffer here with a video on how to change the properties of an existing Panda Power grid. I just received the question from Arno and the question was how, for example, drop certain parts of the grid. So how to drop single elements or how to change the properties of single elements. And for this, you can use pandas functions. Since panda power is based on pandas, you can use any pandas functions. And in this video, I'm going to show you four helpful functions to manipulate the data in your data frames. Just a short note before we start, panda power is based on pandas. So you can use any pandas function and just check out their documentation on about how to manipulate the data frames. There will be a lot of, a lot of useful stuff in here, especially the user guide and about indexing should give you a good start on how to select data in the data frames. To have an example grid, we're going to use a grid from our network suite. In that case, we want to load the secret low voltage grid. If we print now what's inside this grid here, you're going to see that it has, for example, here, you can see that it has 44 buses, some loads, some switches and so on. So the first useful function is, or if you want to now print some information about the buses, you could use print net bus and then you get all the buses printed. But there's another really cool uh, pandas function, which is called head and head just prints you the head of the data frame. So you only see parts of it, which is pretty nice to get an overview about the, the data frame itself. So this bus data frame in our case. Okay, now let's say we want to drop the first row. So we want to drop the row and for this we can use the drop function of pandas by the way, if you want to, if you if you need some information about any function in Python, you can always use help. Help the function name, and then it will print the documentation. So here, you say it says what what drop can do. So here, for example, you can use it on labels, axis, index, and so on. In our case, as I've just said, we want to drop the first row here. Uh, we want to use it like this. So we say drop index, and then we give it a list. So the list would be here the first index and this will give you the data frame back so you could either either do this net bus equals net bus drop or you can use in place which applies the function directly on the data frame and if you do that now the second the, the bus is now missing so here it was was in there now we dropped the index one the first row um, you can also use that on columns. Uh, you can use columns, the columns you want to drop. Let's say you drop name, um, then the buses don't have any names anymore. So the, you, you just drop the names data frame, which is not a problem if you want to use, uh, want to uh, run a power flow calculation, I think. This should work because the name is optional or yeah, this, this this works, so there's no problem. Uh, but if you would drop, for example, uh, the voltages and run a power flow calculation, oh boy, this will give you an error because it says the bus data frame does not have voltages anymore and this is not allowed. So you, you screwed up kind of. So now you cannot use the data frame anymore. Uh, so we're going to delete that and have our head back. So this is... The, the, the data frame as it was before. Okay, so this is drop. Um, if you want to change the property of a single element, you can use different kinds of functions, different kinds of location functions. So you could use lock, and there is i lock, there is add, and there is i add. So first, lock is used on the index. So you can say, for example, um, index zero to three and here i want to change the name of the bus to whatever john um, then it will change the names of zero two and three this can also be done by using iloc for example which uses index indices um uh, integers so this will change the integer uh, in, integer based position so here you would have to enter zero and then it will change the names as well if you put in 
um, here for example 0, 1, 2, 3, you would put in 3, it would change to zone to John. Okay, so this uses the, 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 the position of the column. If you put here zone, I think it should give you an error. Yeah, this gives you an error because you have to use the, the integer position of the column here. Okay, mm, so let's put that back to three and be careful when you use iLock, it uses the position of the row. So if we drop, for example, um, the first, no, the second, the second index, notice that the second in index is here and, oh, sorry, and we drop it. If we drop it, then you will see that the lock function is applied anyways at the iLock function anyways on on this row here. So this is row with index three, uh, three but here you say two, three. Re notice that? So it, it uses the position of the row. If you would use lock now, it will give you an error because two is not in the index. So if you try that, oh, sorry, you have to change this as well. Um, name or whatever, it will say key error two is not in the index. So you have now uh, produced an error because two is not in the index anymore. So this is how you use lock and iLock and what the difference is between those. If you just want to change the um, uh, property, okay, print it again. So uh, if you would just want to change the property of one single element, so for example, of the first row, you, you use netbus at, and then you say one, for example, here, name should be uh, John. So here it changes the position of only the first index. Add is faster than lock in that case. So add is faster than lock but it only works for one element. You can also use iAd, which is basically similar to iLock. Uh, so here, for example, iAd zero, uh, one zero would change uh, the position here as well. Okay, so this is how you use head, um, drop and lock and so on. And there's another function which is quite handy. For example, here, if we want to list all the buses which have the same voltage, we can say, group the elements by the voltage. And this will give you first the voltage here. So if we print that, it will give you the, the, the voltages here. So 0 0.4 and 20 kV. And if you print here, the data frame, it will gives you, it would give you a copy of the data frame netbus, which only has here first the, okay, this is a little bit confusing, sorry the first um, first uh, C, uh, the, the low voltage buses and here the 20 kV buses. If you want to, for example, change now um, the 20 kV buses to 30 kV buses, you could do it like this, or you could try to do it like this, but it will fail. And uh, you can say for this data frame where you checked now, the voltage should be 20 kV and you say this should be um, 30 this will fail. So if you print that now, it will it will not change the property of the data frame in that dot bus because this here, this data frame is just a copy. If you want to change the property of the the real data frame, you have to get the indices of of this copy here because the indices are the same. So you need the indices here, and then you say uh, the voltage should be 30 and then you have the same the, you, you change the, the the voltages of the 20 kV buses uh, this can be done of course uh, faster if you don't need group by for this um, you can also use just lock and then say net bus vn kV equals 20 and it will change the the property as well so much for the data manipulation. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to answer.